on the Whitlings prototype. We are on episode number eight, and today we're going to be trying to use a line renderer to draw out all of the connected paths on our cubes. <clears throat> it's always really good to have a visual representation of what you're trying to do, so that way it's very easy just to look and see, hey, this is working, hey, this is not working, and move on from there. So, let's create a new empty game object. I'll call this debug path renderer. And at first, we're only going to do... Mm. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's a little bit tricky. So let's start simple, as always. <clears throat> we're going to have a single line renderer. Let's zero out this here. And we are going to need a material to attach to this. Let's call this the debug line debug path mat. Maybe like a nice bright red. Something to let us know, hey, this thing is a path. That's a little bit strange that it's blue. Whoa. Oh, oh, I linked up the path wall mat. How did I do that? Oh, I'm dumb. Debug path mat. I guess I must just I must have just seen path and spaced out. <clears throat> so our width will be 0 0.1. And we will use world space, that is correct. Um, let's create a separate script for this. And it's time to start organizing. We've got more than eight scripts in a single place. So I've got all of these scripts that deal with the cube. Kind of want to rename cube core to just cube. Let's do that. Cube begin. There we go. Okay. So let's move this cube. Back to the origin, so we've just got a nice three long path in a single direction. Good for testing. So let's create our script, and this will be a debug draw path. And we'll drop it on this component or this game object here. So our debug draw path is only going to need one path node. For now, it's going to be the path node that we're going to start with. This is never going to change, so we'll serialize it private. Uh, path node, start node. And we're also going to need a line renderer. <clears throat> there we go. So let's link that up. That's a step that I always forget to do. I don't know why, but I do forget to do it all the time. So the start node is inside cube begin. This is our begin path face. Which one? This one, not this one.
There we go. And the line render is on this game object, so we'll just have it reference itself. <clears throat> Interesting. So I do believe that as we rotate cubes, when two cubes, when two paths go on top of each other, they recognize that they are linked. Hmm. <laughs> so actually, we're going to need to change how this path node is set up. Because right now, we just have like. Is this path node connected to this one, and this one's connected to this one? <clears throat> but our path nodes are also going to need to know the other direction. So you can imagine that no matter which way our Whitling is walking... Oops. That's kind of gross. I sort of mixed these up here. Let's change that. So no matter which way the Whitling is walking, there's a path to tell them where the next node is. So, let's see. The way I'm going to set this up, I think... We have two types of paths, right? <clears throat> One of them has three nodes, and the other one has two nodes. So I think what I'm going to do is I am going to store these in an array. And then each node is going to remember which number it is in the array. So that way, I know that if my Whitling hits this one, we started at the end of the array, so we're going to keep subtracting from the target index until we get to zero. If we started this one in the array, then we're going to keep incrementing the target index until we get to the length of our array. So that way, our path nodes know... Interesting. So I think this way we only have to worry about links. Because when a Whitling is on the face of a cube, it knows which node it's targeting. And it can just move to that node until it hits the end, and then it can say, hey, I'm at the end. Does this, um, does this node link to another face? So that seems like a decent plan. I do want to rename linked path node to, let's call this, um, let's see, if you're not sure what a variable should be named, I recommend talking it out loud. Explain out loud what you want the variable to be doing, because that way, when you say it out loud, it activates a separate part of your brain, and it's crazy. Um, it totally works. Talking to yourself makes you a better programmer. <laughs> okay, so what is this node doing? This node is linking to a node on another face. So link to other face node? I guess linked path node does kind of work. Um, if it does work, I'm just going to add a better comment up here. If not null, this node is linked to path node on another face. <clears throat> So 
So we've got our cube face. Let's create a serialized field. Oh wait, path node list. We already have our path node list here. So like I said, each path node is going to have an index. I think we should be able to use Unity's awesome set get Ah, uh, see, this is never going to be changed. This index will not change during runtime. So making it public is not a great idea. I'm just going to make our private index, and then we'll have some accessors and mutators. There we go, this index equals the index that was passed in. And this will just return the index associated with the class. <clears throat> We've got some accessors and mutators. This is C++ style, sort of my mother language, if you will. So, let's see. Let's set these indices when the cube face... Okay, so here we're finding each child. So we'll make a path node. And instead of storing the game object, we will... Oh, <laughs> ath node. Oops. We'll get the component path node. We'll say to add .set index is child index. And then we'll add this to our path node list. That means we're going to have to change this to a list of path node. And then this new here, we need to change oh, game object to path node as well. <clears throat> okay, so let's test this out, make sure everything's going well. I'm going to serialize this field just for testing. Uh, we don't care about cube begin. Let's go to. Do we have an L somewhere? I think we have one L. All straights. All straights. Awesome. Index is zero, index is one. Okay. So it looks like these are being set correctly. <clears throat> I think we're ready to start dealing with. Hmm, okay. So, our... I think our path node should know which face it belongs to, because our debug path renderer, we're only giving it this node here, but the node needs to look, ask the face what the next node is if that makes any sense. I don't think we need this serialized anymore. Test complete.
you could call this parent or owner. It is the object that contains the path. It is the object that the path is on. Path node is on this face. We'll call it owning face. So we'll make some mutator, and then we'll make an accessor as well. <clears throat> so in debug draw path, let's do it in start. Make sure that everything is all set up. So, like I said, we're going to need a direction. So I'm going to check to see if start node's index is zero. If I know that the index is zero, I'll use a ternary operator here, then I know that my I'm going to be incrementing. I'm going to be adding one every time I hit a new path node. Otherwise, I know I want to be going backwards through the array. So I'm going to set this direction to negative 1. And direction might not be a good term. Let's call this increment value. And let's make a list of vector threes. And this is going to be a, what should we call this? Path node position list. <clears throat> PNPL, path node position list. So the first thing I'm going to do is add the start node, transform position. So while increment, or um, you're going to need an int for current index. Ah, uh, maybe we don't need this one here. Let's comment it out for now. So we're going to set the current index, and I'll say why current while current index is greater than zero, no, greater than or equal to zero, and current index is less than start node dot get face get owning face dot get node count so here's our cube face we'll make a mutator here oh no an accessor sorry integer get node count this is going to return path node list dot count cool so this while loop is allowing us to go both ways. And when we're done with the loop, I'm just going to add increment value to current index. And that will either add positive one, moving it up in the array, or it'll add negative one, moving it backwards through the array. OK, so let's do that at the end. Current index plus equals increment value.
You know what? Let's um let's create a cube face current face. Because we're gonna need to do this over multiple different faces, right? And for at first we're just gonna test the original face. So current face dot get let's rename this get path node count. And we'll get a vector three get path node position. Pass it an index, and then we can return PNL path node list at index dot transform dot position. <clears throat> path node position list add current face dot get path node position current index. So what this is doing is add all nodes on the face to our list. We're only testing one face for now. Once we've gone through and gotten all two or all three nodes, not that crazy, <clears throat> you might be wondering why this code looks so complex, and that's because I sort of have a plan for how I'm going to do this, and so I'm adding a little bit of complexity in the beginning in order to make my life easier later. So once we're done with that, I'm going to create a position loop. PNPL.count. We want to increment that at the end of the body of the for loop. Oh, you know what? I don't think we need to do that. Hey, oh, I think we just need to take our line renderer. Um, and we want to set the number of line segments, and that's equal to the PNPL. And then we've got our line renderer and set positions pnpl i don't think it will like this so we might want to do two array <clears throat> yeah you'll notice that the argument here is looking for a classic array type it's not a list type but luckily the list has this method inside of it called to array and that just allows us to convert the list to the array so that the argument type is correct and the code can compile. In theory, this should work. We should get a red line with two segments that go from here to here. Dang it. <laughs> Oh, what do we got? We got an error somewhere. Object reference not set to the instance of an object. Huh. Start node. Get owning face. Oh, I guess we never called set owning face. There we go. to add set owning face this <clears throat> cuz this is the instance of the cube face that is l looking for our path nodes so let's try that again hey yeah red line that's what i'm talking about life is good So whenever we're done rotating a cube, what I'd like to do is, oh, hey, what's going on there? This is not working. Q 
cube core So this is hiding, but this cube is not doing the hiding. <clears throat> hmm, okay, I think I see what's happening. Because our cube faces are no path faces they don't have a cube face component attached to them and so with no cube faces attached that means our ray cast is not shooting out along those faces so even though this cube face is doing nothing let's attach where's our prefab building container no path face Cube face. Apply. Done. Oh, this is not going to work, is it? Yep. Stupid Unity prefabs are terrible. Oh boy. That's okay. So here's our cube begin. I'm just going to select all of these no path faces. Oh, these do have a cube face on them. What the F? Hmm. And I think it's the cube core is the one that Deactivate hidden faces. Look through all of the faces here. Hmm. So this still says it has cube faces of size zero. Let's turn off these two cubes. And let's debug. What the heck is going on here? Oh, I see. I think. We're never actually calling get faces or deactivate hidden faces on start here. So let's create a new serialized field is start end. And here we can make sure if is start end which means it's a start or an end. And we can call get faces, deactivate hidden faces. So this is start end. Let's apply that to the cube begin prefab. Let's turn on our two other cubes and get rolling. Hey, much nicer. There we go. Life is good again. So anytime a cube is done rotating, it's going to need to recalculate this path here, right? And in theory, if everything works, the path should go all the way down here and wrap under to right here. That is sort of the goal. 
Well, first we just want this straight line. The next trick will be getting it to wrap around. And then the final trick will be, well, we've got two more tricks after that, but <clears throat> we'll cross that bridge when we burn it. I think that's the phrase. <laughs> um, cool. So debug draw path, we got our first thing working. Let's move this into a public function. We'll call this um, public void test calculate path. So once we get down here, we know that we've gone through the entire list. Current index is either negative one or it's either path node count. So what we want to do is uh, move current index back one value and search for a connected face. So we're moving it backwards. Whichever way it was going, now it's going one in the opposite direction to give us the either exact beginning or the exact end of the array. And I am going to say... I just want to get path node current index. So this is in our cube face again. Oh, this is going to take an index. And that's PNL at index. dot get linked path node so here we go public path node go. And I'll say if current or no, if next does not equal null, current face equals next dot get owning face. Otherwise, current face equals null. And what we can do here is we can wrap all of this in another while loop. So while current face does not equal null, I want this code to keep running. There's one other chunk of code that we're going to need to do. And we want to move this increment value into this body of code. And we can just use current index here because we're starting the loop. Excellent. So instead of, let's cheat. As always, get key down, key code, no, nope. key code, u, u for update, and I called this test calculate path. <clears throat> so 
So we hit U, we got this line. We hit U, oh yeah, that's what I like to see. U. Hey, what's going on here? Did I get caught in an infinite loop? Oh my god. Shoot. Control shift escape. This looks and feels like an infinite loop. Let's reopen it. What the heck happened there? Make sure cube core is still start end. Let's see if we can replicate that U. Well, now U is doing nothing. Oh boy. Let's clean up our console a little bit. I do believe that we will need it. Debug path renderer. Oh, hey! Our debug path renderer didn't have the script attached. So, cube begin. So, that's our first node. We'll link that up. Line renderer belongs to the debug path. Let's save the scene so we don't have to do that again. Okay, so that works fine. How about now? Boom. Infinite loop. Okay. So whenever you do encounter an infinite loop, being able to replicate it is always very important. Oh, that's funny. No, that shouldn't happen. Let me draw out what I think happened. So we've got our cubes here. And then remember, this cube also has a path that goes downwards. And so what I think might be happening is once we get to this node, we're essentially just bouncing back and forth between the two nodes on the corner, right? I think we're going like this. But let's debug it. Let's see what happens. So this is totally dead again. Fun times. Oh my. What is going on? Okay, there we go. Hmm. Okay, so. Can we make this happen on the first try? I do believe we can. So this way you can see here we've got our wraparound case here.
you. Okay, good. First time. <clears throat> I've been able to further nail down the reproduction method for this infinite loop. I'm really glad there's not two steps. I'm glad we don't have to build out the working three line and then break it. So let's go to our debug draw path. We'll put a breakpoint right here at the very tippy top. We'll attach the debugger to Unity. And let's commence to breaking. Boop. There we go. So stepping through, let's see. We've got an empty path node list. Our current face is the begin end path face. That's correct. I think our current index should be zero. Good. So our increment value should be one. Uh, okay. There we go, increment value is one. So I add current index zero. There's one item in our path node position list. Increment it. Now there's two, done. So we move back to index one, which is our very last path node. And we try and get the linked path node for it. Next was found. So now current face is up. Straight path face. That's correct. Current index is zero. We'll do this again. Now we've got three. Now we've got four. What about the next one? Right? That is a different up straight path face, I think. Um, let's do current face. Actually, in the watch list, can I check current face dot transform dot parent dot name face container? Not quite what I wanted. Let's go up one more level. Cube, great, I renamed them both to cube. That doesn't help at all. <laughs> but it seems like it was able to find the next path node. Let's go back to our locals. Current index was zero again. Five, six. So this should not be an up straight path face. I think this should be a right straight fat path face. Oh. Oh, back. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So now we're going down the back of the cube, starting at zero again. Kind of nice. Would this be bottom? Down. Oh my gosh, so it is actually going like so. That's crazy. I was not expecting that to work. Well, it's obviously not working, but um, it's breaking somewhere wildly different. Starting at zero again. This should be another down straight path face, right? So we've got 12 items in here, and this should be linked to nothing. Forward. Oh. Wait, forward? Yeah, it should be forward. And then this is going to go right back to up. What? Hmm. 
Okay, this is what's happening. Oh, I have to reopen it again. Okay, so the issue is we've got our begin. So here's our begin. And what's happening is our path is walking down here. This is fine. It's going through the blocks now. And then what's actually happening is it's going from here up to here and then continuing in this loop. So everything is fine except for this connection here. This node should be touching nothing. But instead, it thinks it's touching this other path face that is totally turned off. So let's see. Here we get the faces, deactivate hidden faces. So I think what I'd like to do is here, let's do a, let's get do some path breaking. So, so if I'm deactivating a face, see I've got this face here. And it's got two nodes. But remember, there's another node on this other face here. <clears throat> so if this is the face that I'm breaking, I want to check to see, does this face have a link? If it does, first I'm going to break the link's link. And then I'm going to break my link. And I'm going to need to do it for this one too. So is this one linked? If it is, break that link's link. And then break my own. Path index. Yay. Less than pnl dot count. So let's see, path node linked pnl at path index dot get linked path node. If linked does not equal null, break the others link first. The reason we need to break the other's link first is if I broke my link first, then the other guy would still be pointing at me. I need to say, okay, I know that I'm connected with this guy. I'm going to break this guy and then break my own self. So let's see. We have a linked get linked path node. In fact, I'm going to rename this to break paths. 
Yay! And then path node. This will be a mutator. So here we'll set the linked path node to null. What was that in? Cube face, I think. So first we'll break the one we're linked to's path, and then we'll break our own path. And where did I call this function? I haven't called it yet, have I? Yes, I have. When I'm deactivating a hidden face. I do believe we'll get some runtime errors. How long are we going for? Almost one hour. Hmm. It's so funny when you're writing code, you think you're going to do one thing, and then you spend 30 minutes trying to figure out how to do a thing that you need to do to do that original thing. Such is life. So let's run it, see our errors. No errors. Interesting. Dang it. Infinite loop again. Oh no! Just totally broken. Hmm. Let's check out our begin cube. Our begin end path face. So this is our second node, and it doesn't think it's linked to anybody. Interesting. What about you? I'm going to rename this to cube zero. Cube one. So cube zero's up straight path face should have two nodes, both of them connected. Neither of them are connected. Oh no, no, this one's connected to cube one. That's right. But this one is not. Connected. Why? Is it because my begin path node doesn't have the rigid body set up correctly? Aha! That would have taken a long time to figure out. So, no gravity is kinematic. How about now, buddy? Nothing now. Oh boy. Infinite loop now. Ah. Oh man. Always save before testing. Good grief. So I do believe that our cube begin, okay, so these names are wrong again. Cube one, cube zero. This has the rigid body on it. Let's add rigid bodies to each of these. No gravity, kinematic. Let's apply this prefab. And I guess what we can do is let's not hit the U button. Let's just use the inspector and try and figure out who does this cube think he knows. So there's no linked path node here. 
which is weird to me because if there's no path node, it should have just drawn the single line. There should not have been an infinite loop there. Did I do something silly? I probably did. Let's check Q0's up face. Okay, so these two are connected, which is right. All of these are connected all the way around. That's definitely a setup for an infinite loop. We're not really protecting against that, but I really do believe that Hmm. How about when a cube rotates, let's just break all their nodes. Yeah, yeah, let's not even use this on exit silliness. We don't need that. Um, cube rotator on begin rotate. Cube core Where did we turn on? Here's our rotator. Here's activate all faces. Let's make another private function, break all face paths. Ah, you know what, that's just going to be this exact same thing. So maybe we could rename this to Activate and break all paths. And now in our path nodes, we really don't need to care about trigger exit. I do believe that that is going to accomplish absolutely zero. Oh, hey, this linked path node is connected to cube's right face. That is correct. Cool. What is this one connected to? Nothing. Good, good, good. Okay, let's save the scene, make sure everything is good. I'm ready to test our loop around. Oh my! Okay. So we need to make sure that this is valid as other as well. Excellent naming, right? Linked, linked. I love it. Oh. 
Oh, semicolon. Hey -o. Whoa. Whoa now. Why are you all goofy like that? Whoa, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that is pretty bad so it thinks that this here this path here and this path here are indeed connected Why? But why? Nothing too crazy here, I hope. Just a single line. Okay. Oh my gosh. Now we've got an infinite loop. I think we must be looping around this cube internally. I think that's the problem. So we're going to need some way to differentiate about those corner links. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a quick break, uh, probably about 10 minutes. And when we return, I think what we're going to do is keep working. When you're writing code, it's always good to stretch, get up, walk around once an hour or something like that. I know some people, what they like to do is every time they get compiler errors, they will do one push-up for every error. Um, obviously, in some circumstances, that is a terrible idea because I've had mistakes that cause thousands of errors, and I don't have time to do a thousand push-ups, nor the upper body strength. So take a break, and we will return shortly.
Okay. Ah, we can keep that. Maybe for later. Um, I also have a to-do list. Oh, boy. To-do lists are very good. And my possible features list has grown quite a bit. But, you know, those are my out-of-scope, ridiculous ideas that I think would be quite fun. But you need the core to be fun before you start adding on. Make sure that foundation is solid before you start adding features. Okay. <laughs> to the drawing board. Let's see what the heck is going on. Where'd my pen go? Here it is. Okay. So let's do a side view here. So, if we have an internal path, like so that we have, and this is a totally valid path configuration to have when we're dealing with randomization, we are going to need to Ah, okay, I think I got it. So we have two nodes that are overlapping here that belong to this cube, right? And so what we want to say is if the nodes overlap, and begin or belong to same cube, Then <clears throat> we want to raycast from both of those faces. And if there's a neighbor in either direction, we're going to break the link. Right? Because these two guys have overlapped, and then I know that one of them belongs to this face here, and there's no neighbor, but one of them belongs to this face here, and there's definitely a neighbor. <clears throat> and so we will break those links and say that they are not valid links. That is going to be in the path node. Okay, overlapped. Hmm. So, cube core, owning core. Public cube core, so we'll make an accessor here, get owning core. No, no return here. <laughs> Just an autopilot for a second there. Owning core equals core. Excellent. So now, in our, oh boy, I think that's our cube face spawner. Here's our cube core. Let's move this up here.
And here we can say core dot. Oh no. Um, new face get component cube face set owning core core. So now when these spawned things. <clears throat> When these faces are spawned, each face is told has a reference to the core that owns it. Unfortunately, we're also going to have to modify our cube core here in our start. Uh, get faces. Oh, hey. Where's get faces? We could just do it in here, couldn't we? Yeah, let's do it in there. I like that much better. Um, so boop, boop, put that back. And then inside of our cube core, when we get the face, Cube faces at child index, we will set the owning core to this. There we go. Now, no matter which uh, code path the code takes, we should be able to get the core. Okay, all the way back to path node. <laughs> so, if this get owning face, get owning core is the same as overlapped get owning face, get owning core. So they both, two things overlapped that belong to the same same cube. <laughs> okay, so they belong to the same cube. What's the next check? Raycast from both faces. <clears throat> so I believe... In our cube core, let's make a public function for has neighbor in face direction. And I think what we can do is just grab all of this, right? So we're just going to get the face position here. We'll build the ray. We'll do the hit. And then what we can do is return the result of this physics raycast. <clears throat> the reason I'm extracting this function into its own separate thing is because this is a function that I'm going to want to call from the path node. And now I can just say if has neighbor in face direction cube faces at face index. Oh, we got to reopen this. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Whoa! 
Unexpected symbol semicolon. Oh, I deleted it. Okay. Now, if I run this, we should still have our disappearing faces. Good. No more Z fighting. I like that. Now, in our path node, let's do this here. So if my core equals other core, and my core dot has let's do it. There we go, just making a bunch of variables to keep our code nice and clean. So we'll check and make sure this is false. Um, ooh. No, no, we'll just do this in a in another th if in here. So if my core has a direction in that faces direction or my core has neighboring face in other face direction then what we want to do is return. So this is to prevent nodes from linking if they belong to the same cube and they have a neighbor in that direction. So if any of these fail, then we're just going to set the linked path node. <clears throat> I do believe this is going to need to get more complicated in the future. But for now, hopefully, let's make sure to save stuff. I am not certain. That was a lot of code. You. Okay, not broken yet. How about now? Damn it. <laughs> Time to debug again. Can I like refresh this with F5? Come on, guys. I guess before we debug, what I'd like to do is, let's just inspect the paths that are linked here. So this one's cube zero, and cube zero should have two links, two valid links on its up. Yes, yes. This is cube one, this is the cube one right side. This should have zero links. None, none. Okay, good.
So now, oh, which face is this? That is our right path face. So this is not linked. Neither is this one. What about our begin? Nothing. Nothing. I have an idea. Let's delete this. Let's spin you this way. Let's attach to Unity. And put a breakpoint here. <clears throat> so I do believe that this overlap should happen when this node here overlaps this node here. Whoa! Oh, I activated that face. And by activating that face, it's actually running the on trigger enter data. So I don't think that's what I want. Where am I doing that? In our cube core. Here we're telling the game object to turn itself off. That's not what we want. Let's just tell the face to deactivate. Let's do a set active false. So this is in our cube. We need a public function here. And let's see, get components in children, mesh renderer, and let's do a to do. Put this in awake and make the array a member variable. So we only have to do this once in the beginning. <coughs> I don't have any plans for the cube's meshes to change dynamically. That might be kind of cool, but um, definitely we'll just, if we decide to put that crazy feature in, we'll do it later. I think what was happening is we were breaking all of the paths 
and then turning the object on. And then by turning the object on, Unity was like, oh, cool, I'm going to do all these trigger enters, and it was reconnecting them, then spinning. And that's why we were getting some really, really goofy stuff. And you know what? Let's just do this to do now, right? To done. Um... And we'll hop down into awake. There we go. And I do believe in our cube core, we need to call set active again later when we're turning it on. Activate and break all paths. I still debugging? No, I couldn't be. So I want to test it with a single path. Okay. Well, let's just see what happened there. Okay. So here's our cube begin, our end node. Oh. Cube zero, right straight path face. That is awesome. Does up have any? Up is connected. Up is connected to begin. Dang it. Up is the hidden one. <clears throat> So let's add some extra outs to our path node stuff here. If overlapped is null, And here we're not going to allow connections on faces that are inactive. So that means to me we're going to need a bool in our face. And this dot is active equals is active. Do to do to do public bool get is active. And then in our path node, if my face dot get is active. So if it's not active or not other face then we'll return again <clears throat> let's get rid of this guy make our testing variables as low as possible Boom. Okay. So cube begin not connected. What? What about cube zero's right? Not connected. Well, all of this seems to still be working. So let's start the debugger 
and see what happens. That was a weird. Other is cube. Okay, so this is going to return. Other is cube again. Other is cube. Other is cube. So here the... Trigger is entering cube again. Boy, that's a lot of triggers. Node. There we go. Let's just put a breakpoint here instead. So my face is the begin and path face. Other face is right straight. Okay, that's cool. The cores are different. Whoa! It thinks... Oh, shoot! <laughs> <clears throat> It thinks that the begin end path face is inactive. Man, debugging is the best ever. Um, that means we're going to need to expose the is active of our cube face. And we can get rid of this note here. It is now a list of path nodes. And we'll apply. Okay, so boom, boom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's check face zero up. This should be no paths. Yes. What happens if I hit you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm going to save here, make sure everything is good. Let's just delete this cube. We can make them again later. Now I want to test this. Ugh. Okay. So it failed. That's acceptable. It did not get in an infinite loop, which I do like. So now our up face should be connected to our cube begin, and it's not. That's up. Left should be off. Oh, left is active. Oh, no. Forward is active. Oh, I spun it. Right, right, right. Okay, forward is not active. This one worked. Whoa.
So right is working. But these are not working. <clears throat> Okay, let's debug again. Uh, path node. Attach. So we're looking for cube zero, path node, overlapping. Okay, that looked pretty darn good. Okay. My face is active, other face is active. So this should pass. The cores are not the same. Overlapped. So my face was begin. Other face was forward. Now it's forward and begin overlapping. That worked fine. Begin and up. Shoot. So I believe this is what's happening. When we begin to rotate a cube, I'm turning all of these faces on. And you also have to think about it like when the cubes actually have their things hit, Oh boy, this is going to be a tough to draw. It's almost like this. Right? The cube is still spinning. <clears throat> it's like 80% of the way through its spin. And so that face is still active. We don't turn off the faces until the rotation is complete. So I wonder if what we could do is turn off the, just turn off all of the path nodes on begin rotate. And then when the rotation is complete, <clears throat> then we will deactivate the faces. And for all active faces, turn on the path nodes. Oof. Okay. <clears throat> Cube core. Activate and break all paths. Let's call this um, disable all path nodes. Oh, that's a good question. Um, let's do C sharp events execution order. <clears throat> Currently, they are executed in the order they are registered. However, this is an implementation detail, and I would not rely on this behavior staying the same in future versions since it's not required by specifications. Ooh. 
<laughs> so it's saying that <clears throat> my original plan was to just add two other functions to this. On begin rotate. So maybe we'll need two more events just to ensure the order is preserved in future versions. On pre So I have a pre-begin rotate. And a post rotate complete. Okay. So in awake, let's move this, put this in order. Nope, disable all path nodes. And then our rotator post rotate complete. Let's add enable active face path nodes. <laughs> okay. So disabling all of the path nodes. I wonder, cube face, we have a path node container. Set path node container active. And set active lies within the game object. There we go. We'll probably want a bool. Oh no, we can just use get is active here. Hey, nice to... Oh. Hey. Maybe we could just do this whenever we set active. Let's think about the order of these things. Well, first of all, set active is a terrible name because really what it's doing is changing the renderer So let's control RR rename this to set Set renderers active.
So maybe what we do is when we spin, <clears throat> we turn on the renderers, we turn off the path nodes. And when we're done spinning, Oh, damn. Orders of operations are tricky. I'm taking this back. <clears throat> taking all this back. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of things to take back. Let's see. <sighs> to the drawing board. So I have a path node. Let's think about this a different way. <clears throat> and when I'm spinning, as I enter a trigger, I'm going to add to a list of connected nodes. And once the spin is done, I'm going to have each node <clears throat> go through its list of connecteds and then throw out bad matches. So maybe this is where we would like validate the path. This way I can just let Unity's trigger system overlap stuff and it doesn't care. And then once the rotation is complete, I'm going to go through all of the nodes on that specific cube that was rotated, awesome, and do connection checks. Yeah, okay. This might be a bit of an overhaul. We're still going to want this check, but we just don't want it in the overlap or in the trigger enter. I almost want to just get rid of this is active altogether. Let's try it. <clears throat> I'm not going to be turning path nodes on and off anymore. They're just always going to be on. Let's comment this out. Uh, 
and we'll call this possible path node links. PPNO. In awake, whoa. Sta awakert. No, in awake. There we go. We'll set this up to be a new list. Make sure that the thing we're overlapping is a path node. And then we'll just add overlapped here. I do feel like an exit would be fine here as well now. And this is also going to be a path node end overlap. And if we can't find it, let's return, quit the function. Otherwise, ppnl remove and overlap. <clears throat> public void validate linked path. Uh, and at the very end of validate linked paths, let's clear out this list, right? So if ppnl count is equal to one, this node is only overlapping one other node, we have a match. Print match found. Let's just do that for now. <clears throat> okay. So now we need to call this validate linked path on every path node in a cube. What do we do in on rotate complete? Oops, let's call this, no, 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 I have a better plan. We can get rid of this craziness here. <clears throat> good, good, I'm happy to delete code. Okay, so our cube core, I'm going to need another private function. Handle rotate complete. We might not even need this break paths, huh? I don't know about this. Um, note, is this necessary? I don't think this is going to be necessary. But let's see. On begin rotate, we turn it on and break all paths. Handle rotate complete. <clears throat> I 
and when we handle rotate complete, we deactivate hidden faces. And then for every face, we will, what should we call this? Validate path nodes. Validate path nodes. Oops. Oh, you know it's interesting. Our in our L shape, that middle path node. It's never going to be connected to anything. It's never going to be linked to anything. So actually, instead of doing a for loop, I can just look at the first node on the path and the last node on the path. Path node list at index 0. Path node list at index path node list dot count minus one. If first node dot get is active. Oh, I should have kept that, huh? Yeah, let's put that back. I definitely like that. Oh, wait. That's actually... Who is active? What's going on here? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Let's put this back. Sorry, buddy. Else, oops, um, we'll do a first node break path. <clears throat> oh my god, that was so much work. Oh god. I'm going to delete this back piece. Oh, we should get some runtime errors for this, I bet. Dang it. So let's make all of our faces no path faces. <clears throat> the simplest execution possible. Argument is out of range, worth investigating. Match found! Hey -oh! <laughs> No! <laughs> 
it? <laughs> oh, right. It said match found, but we didn't do anything else in the print. Uh, what's this argument out of range business that's happening here? Cube zero, validate path nodes. Ah, that is correct. If path node list dot count is equal to zero, return. Because our no faces have no paths, we are trying to index into the first path in an empty list. Okay. So in here, I'm going to say this is the path node on the cube. <clears throat> the only item in this list is the one that we are overlapping. So we'll get the other path node, and I'm going to say other set linked path node to this, and linked path node equals other. Make the mutator. We'll just call this linked LPN linked path node equals linked. You cool. You cool. Um, oh, this is going to be a big test. Let's duplicate this cube and we'll put an L here and we'll move it to one on the X. And then let's duplicate again with an L and let's put it one on the X, one on the Z. Let's go even further. This is one on the Z. Oh, almost. <laughs> oh, that's cool. OK, OK. What's going on here? That does not look good. So this is cube zero. Let's let's run this again and look at the How about this? Cube O got our up L path path node Outer node is not linked to anything. Oh. Our L path face doesn't have our rigid body set up correctly. <clears throat> oh, dang it. Dang it. This is why Unity prefabs are terrible. Wait, are they? Because I'm spawning it at runtime, this should work. Uh, 
No, 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 no. Why? What has happened? Well, we're getting a little bit closer. We've been struggling for a solid two hours now, I believe. Yep, that's fine. I do, however, feel like progress is being made. And this path node script is a lot cleaner now. A lot cleaner. So let's put this back down to no path faces. Put this one up here. Duplicate this bad boy, give it an L. We have one on the X. Duplicate this again, give it zero on the Z. Save. Okay. Okay. So that's cube three. We're dealing with cube threes up. This node is connected to cube zero's node, which is correct. And then this outer node is connected to none. Because once again, our L path face does not have a rigid body. Do 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 bow. <clears throat> Let's see. Connected. Connected. Excellent. So this is connected to two's node. Good, good, good. And this is connected to what index is this node? Link to none. Yeah, that's fine. Why don't these have indices? Oh, it's hidden. Right, 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 right. Okay, okay. So let's debug before we go on break. Um, hmm. Where does that happen? And that happens in our draw debug path. Oh, am I linked up? Nope, I have not attached yet. Hmm. Pyong. Testaroony time. Okay. Let's walk through. Begin, end, path, face. That is correct. Starting at zero, we add our two nodes from our begin thing. Now we're on up straight path face of cube zero. We should add two. 
get the next one. So now we've got our L path face. This one we haven't really tested yet. Current index is zero. We add three items. That's another L. So we got that. Current index is zero again, increment value is one. We add three more. And now next should be null. <sighs> Current face parent parent cube zero two. Yeah, that's this one here. I think there is something wrong with the index. Let's end task. So, break time. I'll be back in probably 15, 10 minutes. Oof. And continue working. Diligence is a virtue.
Okay. I've only got maybe 15, 10 minutes left, I think. Hmm. I have to rebuild in my mind what we were doing. Why was it breaking? Right. We were in some infinite loop. I want to check the path node index. So we'll remove serialize eventually. Uh, designers should not have access to this value. Okay, so as long as I don't hit you, we should be fine. This is cube two, the one in question. Let's look at its up face path nodes. Okay, so this is index zero, and this is index two. <laughs> And it thinks that nothing is linked. And it doesn't have a... Rigid body. What the heck? <laughs> save, save, save. Cube two up. Now it has a rigid body. Node two is linked to cube three's node two. So when we get index two. So when we get to this second L here, we should be going in reverse, but we were not. Oh. Oh! <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> oh, Hold on. Start node. Because the we're doing start node get index. So because we started on our begin block, our begin cube, the start was zero. Even though we were supposed to do that other L backwards. We were supposed to start at two and then go two one zero. So we're never resetting this start node. So if next is not equal null, current face is that. And start node equals next. I got a good feeling about this, guys. Yeah! How about like so? Oh my. No crash. That's good. Cube two, up L face. So that node is linked to our other node. How about you? 
you're linked to cube one's node. That's correct. Index one. So why didn't you go? Hmm. <clears throat> That looks suspicious. <clears throat> ten positions one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that's right. Um, one thing I'm going to do is whenever we're adding this current face, let's add a new vector 3, 0, 0 0.1, F, 0. <clears throat> Just so we can move the path up out of the ground a little bit. I think this will look better. Much better. <clears throat> Doop. Okay. Doop. Whoa! Whoa, buddy! Oh my god. Well, this is linked. Damn. Whoa. Whoa now. Okay. 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 <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> oh boy. That makes zero sense. <clears throat> Okay, okay, this is going to be the last bit. I'm going to guess that for some reason, one of these two nodes is somehow connected to this guy here. So which cube are you? You are cube 01. So you're connected to cube 2. That's correct. You're connected to none. Let's debug this. What do you think is going on, machine? That's the problem with writing code. The, the code will do exactly what you tell it to do. Although oftentimes, your instructions and your expectations are wildly different. So current face is a thing. What? <gasps> oh, start node has been changing. Okay, okay, I see what's happening here. We've been modifying start node, so it started at 1, which meant it was going backwards, and it hit the end. I see, I see, I see.
So let's use a current node instead of start node. So we just store it once, we never modify it again, and then we'll use current node here. <clears throat> Oh boy. Woohoo! Oh man. Looking sexy. No. No! <laughs> well, I think that's it for me today. Um, I might be back on later. Depends on what, how my plans turn out. But I'm quite happy with how far we got today. The next goal is once we have this 2D path working, it shouldn't be too much work to get our 3D path going. And once the path is working correctly, then we can start doing some really fun stuff. Then we can actually get a whittling in there, walking, following the path. And I'm really excited for that. So... That's it for me today. If you watched, thank you for sticking through this entire wonderful journey. My name is Billy Lemonzest, and I will see you later on for episode number nine.